going back to basic interpretation of a urine routine. Now this urine analysis also has advanced and we can say it is a poor man's kidney biopsy. Story goes back to 2000 years. Hippocrates described bubble on the surface of the urine indicating the kidney disease and this kidney disease is an intractable kidney disease. Hippocrates also recognized that order and color of urine may help in a diagnosis of a fever. Indian physicians described 10 pathological urine indifferent diseases. Modern, modern era of a urine analysis started with Richard Bright that he showed when you when you heat the urine, it uh, coagulates and it correlates with the left ventricular uh, hypertrophy and post-mortem showed uh, there is a uh, nephritis. Now this uh, urine analysis has advanced and we had forgotten the art and science of a urine analysis. My mentor used to say, my mentor Dr. Kokhani used to say, any patient coming to you whether it is cold, cough, fever, loss of appetite, you should get first a urine routine examination. In nephrology, when candidates are trained or they come for uh, examination, that uh, after history physical examination, he is supposed to do a urine examination and then come to a diagnosis. What does this urine examination tell us? Our main aim is to find out the site of the lesion and what is the etiology of the lesion. So structural damage to the kidney, whether it is a glomerular involvement, whether it is a tubular involvement or tubular interstitial involvement, whether it is a systemic disease which is affecting the kidney or um, whether you want to screen the large population in the community, you can use a urine as a screening tool, you can monitor the case of nephrotic syndrome or you can monitor the case of lupus nephritis. You can monitor the diabetic nephropathy by monitoring the protein. Now, diagnosis of systemic involvement, like kidney involvement in diabetes, earliest marker of a kidney involvement is a proteinuria. Patient is getting admitted to the ICU with diarrhea, dysentery, and septic shock, we can test the urinary osmolality and find out what is the status of hydration status of the patient. Urine and routine microscopics can be considered as a, a poor man's kidney biopsy. It can give an idea what is the morphological pattern of injury in the kidney. What are the component of the uh, urine routine examination? physical examination, chemical examination and microscopic examination. Now these physical and chemical examinations are replaced by dipstick uh, test and these dipsticks can give us, uh, can tell you leukocyte stress, nitrile, pH, protein, blood, specific gravity, ketone, glucose and bilirubin. All these parameters we can test. Now, this microscopic examination is getting advanced, but problem is that majority of laboratories are going for automated urine examination. So, this microscopy at present is still neglected and it is need to be upgraded. Now, this is a 15-year-old female school examination analysis was done, urine testing. Mother came running that uh, urine shows uh, WBC 30 to 35. This patient was asymptomatic. Now uh, this, uh, then we did a fresh urine examination. There were no pus cells. Second, uh, this uh, 40 year old male had gone for a health checkup. During health checkup, uh, pH was 7, specific gravity 1020, appearance clear, protein test, sugar nil, nitrite, nitrite uh, negative, uh, but there was a bacteria plus plus. Patient was started on nitrofurantine. 
and refer to nephrology. This, uh, but uh, when he asked, he had given the urine in the morning and urine was examined in the evening. So what is the problem is any urine which is kept for more than four hours will have a bacterial count and this increased bacteria will, uh, urea splitting bacteria will increase the pH. Now this uh, patient was a lupus nephritis following up uh, in a renal clinic. Patient was in a remission, all the time protein was negative and for a visit she comes and uh, she had a RBC 30 to 35 WBC 3 resident doctor comes and says sir uh, this patient has got a probably renal flare. I ask uh, one question to the patient when was the urine collected and when was the last date of uh, menstruation. The patient said it was the fourth day of a menstruation. So what is the moral of this story is that uh, you have to give a proper instruction for a collection. That is very important. Wash hand, uh, open the lid properly, take a proper container, midstream sample, uh, close, the, replace the lid and send it to immediately to the laboratory. Don't uh, wait. If you are going to wait, then uh, freeze the urine or add a preservative to that. Now, when the patient is on catheter, don't take the urine from here or they don't take the urine from here. There is a separate port for the aspiration of the urine from the catheter or what you have to do is remove, the, if you are suspecting catheter associated uh, urinary tract infection, remove the catheter, put the new catheter and take the urine from new catheter for the culture. Now, uh, uh, our uh, mentor, Dr. Acharya, always used to say, you give a written instruction to the patient. What she had made, she had kept a one staff nurse to instruct the patient and give a written instruction that uh, first or second urine sample should be collected in the morning. And before collecting, uh, avoid uh, exercise and all other precautions should be the, don't collect the urine in menstruation and give a patient proper urine container. Don't ask the patient to come with uh, bottles or uh, other container which may contain oil or which may contain uh, cotton thread and other uh, things. It may interfere. Now this uh, dipstick uh, is uh, uh, basically there is uh, absorbent material, nylon mesh, reagent paper and each will have a different uh, uh, reagent. Uh, this uh, leukocyte esterase and uh, nitrite, this will be bedside test for urinary tract infection. Ketones, one thing you have to remember about the ketone, uh, ketone, ketone bodies, beta hydroxybutyric acid. Now majority of the patient, they will have a beta hydroxybutyric acid. This streak, they don't, they don't detect beta-hydroxybutyric acid. So your patient may have a keto acidosis, uh, this uh, uh, ketone body may be negative. Bilirubin, if patient has febrile and your bilirubin comes positive, possibility this is a hepatitis. Bilirubin comes in the urine before the enzyme start increasing. Glucose, protein, if suppose the patient had a normal uh, blood glucose and glucose is coming in the urine, think of it is a proximal tubular dysfunction. Nowadays, commonest cause of glucosuria will be SGLT2 inhibitor. Protein is the earliest marker of the kidney involvement and specific gravity will give idea about concentrating and diluting ability of the kidney. Now this. Uh, this is a 20 year old male, uh, renal allograft uh, recipient, 10th day uh, post uh, transplant. Uh, he had a femoral thrombosis, started heparin, followed by warparin. Uh, INR was 2.5. He was passing the red color urine after uh, discharge and there was no blank pain. Patient, uh, as a being a transplant patient, patient was already admitted to the urology ward and next day we saw, we saw the patient uh, protein trace, sugar nil, nitrile negative, 
um, this uh, urine was red but uh, blood was absent and there were no rbcs means that whatever you whatever hematuria was labeled it was uh, not a hematuria red urine was by something and asking him what was the cause of red urine he had taken a beat prior to giving the urine and because of considering this condition he was admitted in the hospital the proper history is uh, very important color of the urine can give rise the normal color of the urine is pale yellow to deep amber color urine very pale urine will be a dilute urine very concentrated urine means the dehydration may be there but uh, this type of urine may suggest uh, it is a rhabdomyolysis uh, <coughs> intravascular hemolysis this may suggest uh, again glomerular origin this type of and uh, centrifuge mainly rbc this may suggest is a non nephronal origin and this blue color urine suggest patient is on uh, methylene blue this uh, patient was uh, this patient was referred from orthopedic uh, opd orthopedic ward he was admitted in orthopedic ward uh, he had a paraplegia he was on long term catheterization and this was a purple uh, bag uh, purple urine in the bag and that what is the cause of this purple urine in the bag was uh, this uh, patient was constipated dietary protein indole can get um, deconjugated and this bacterial growth in this indoxal will convert it to indigo and indirubin and this will react with this plastic bag and can produce purple this is called as the purple urine bag syndrome by only treating the constipation now this was a 36 year old man referred for heavy protein urea but uh, this patient had a milky urine protein were 4 plus sugar were nil uh, bilirubin was absent and blood was 2 plus but uh, considering this milky urine we had uh, done uh, chylomicron chylomicron should be positive and uh, triglycerides also were positive and after uh, treating this patient after doing cystoscopy silver nitrate installation is um, um, this um, kyluria disappeared and uh, even this uh, urinary abnormalities also uh, disappeared this uh, ph uh, normally ph is uh, 4.5 to 8 ph uh, patient with vegetarian diet they will have mainly alkaline urine patient who are taking non vegetarian they will have uh, this uh, acidic urine patient with acidosis and getting alkaline urine suspect the renal tubular acidosis patient has got a, a, a urinary tract infection alkaline urine suspect um, urea splitting organism now the specific gravity gives you uh, concentrating and diluting ability of the kidney urinary osmolality is better than specific gravity glucose and contrast media will uh, interfere with the uh, specific uh, gravity it can tell you the uh, hydration status of the uh, patient this uh, again uh, protein uh, this um, dipstick will detect the albumin urea uh, capacity to detect the albumin urea is uh, more than 30 mg 30 mg per deciliter so indication to do the micro albumin urea will be when this dipstick protein is negative then do the albumin urea any degree of albumin urea is a marker of a kidney injury albumin directly come from circulation and albumin urea will suggest it is a endothelial uh, dysfunction in the body this uh, patient had a high grade uh, fever with chills headache nausea vomiting there were no urinary complaint patient toxic and tachycardia diffuse abdominal tenderness and this patient had a plus 3 uh, uh, there were no urinary complaint but leukocyte esterase 3 nitrile is uh, positive 
and first sales were uh, more than 50 rbc 5 to 10 this had uh, suggested uh, this is a urinary tract infection simple urinary tract infection uh, has given the diagnosis uh, this um, bedside test to detect uh, urinary tract infection leukocyte uh, esterase and nitrile they have got a quite a good uh, specificity sensitivity nitrile negative does not rule out urinary tract infection because uh, seromonas infection and you uh, intracocci they do, don't uh, convert nitrate into nitrile leukocyte esterase more than 10 per high power field will have uh, yeah. Now, uh, what is the urinary? Uh, these are the cast crystal parasite and bacteria, cellular element RBC and WBC. Uh, good quality of microscope, uh, low magnification, first see on low magnification, see on a high magnification, phase contrast microscopy, polarized microscopy, and bright uh, illumination micro microscopy will be used. Now, uh, this is a method of uh, uh, for urinary sediment. Uh, this was a 20 year old uh, man uh, had a recurrent cross hematuria. It was already evaluated by urologist. You will see that uh, this uh, red urine, blood plus, and RBCs are there 50 to 60. Whether it is a, always there is a problem. This is called as isolated hematuria. Protein urea with RBC will suggest it is a glomerular involvement. But isolated hematuria also be, can be a uh, glomerular problem. This is whether it is nephrologist, urologist. This is a phase contrast microscopy will be definitely helpful. These are a dysmorphic RBC and uh, these are isomorphic RBC. These are isomorphic <coughs> RBC suggestive of a non-glomerular and these are suggestive of uh, this, uh, this was a fairly and bridge. Uh, phase contrast microscopy is a simple method of identifying the glomerular bleeding. 80% uh, cutoff uh, had a good uh, specificity and sensitivity. Uh, these are the different studies. Shows uh, dysmorphic RBC out of 58, 55 were positive, 0 had isomorphic. And urological disorder, all 30 30 had uh, isomorphic RBC. Means test is a very good uh, test. Uh, other is uh, acanthocyte. This acanthocyte may be different. When the RBCs they go through the um, glomerular filter and they go through the tubule, because of osmotic changes, RBC size will change, and this will suggest it is a glomerular origin of. Uh, RBC, acanthocyte urea, characteristic marker of glomerular, and the sensitivity is 56 to 100 percent, and specificity is 90 to 100 percent. Then these are the acanthocyte uh, under phase contrast uh, microscopy. This is a different study showing. Now this patient had a 17 year old female history of edema, puffiness of face, distension of abdomen. Uh, suggestive of uh, necrotic uh, syndrome, uh, protein 4 plus, glucose absent, RBCs are there, WBCs are there, WBC cast, granular cast, uh, occasional waxy cast, RBC cast, multiple cast. This is called as a telescopic uh, urinary sediment and this is a direct uh, microscopy unstained uh, sample suggesting that uh, this is uh, uh, such type of um, the urinary uh, two three slides or more. Uh, this suggests that uh, it is um, uh, lupus apparatus or it can be uh, anti GBM disease or uh, or it can be um, uh, vasculitis. Now this uh, cast uh, uh, cast are formed in the tubules. Uh, Particularly, they are found in the distal tubules. Matrix is TAM horse for protein, and different cells will get embedded in this. Uh, in this, uh, so this uh, this is the RBC cast, suggestive of a glomerular origin of hematuria. This is again a bright uh, field, uh, unstained sample showing a RBC cast, again suggestive of a glomerular. This is a stain. 
urinary sediment uh, showing the acanthocytes and uh, different uh, RBC cast. What is the specific sensitivity of RBC cast is very low. Only 22 to 30 percent of the patient with glomerular diseases will have um, this uh, cast. This now this uh, patient uh, had uh, 10 year old male with nephrotic syndrome with uh, increased blood urea nitrogen creatinine, acute renal failure in nephrotic syndrome, uh, protein urea 4 plus, WBC 30 to 40. But RBCs are not there. Possibility suggesting it is an interstitial involvement. This eosinophils will be uh, useful to diagnose interstitial, drug induced interstitial. In this is a different study showing the eosinophilia still a reliable marker for acute uh, nephritis. But this was in 1986. Now 2020, they say don't put your money on eosinophils in the urine to find it inter interstitial nephritis. These are the different uh, cells. This is a renal allograft recipient. These round cells, these are uh, activated lymphocyte. Early diagnosis of acute cellular rejection, 80 to 90 percent. Uh, uh, this uh, different diseases which can be diagnosed in the kidney transplant, dysmorphic RBC, RBC cast, recurrence of glomerular disease, lymphocyte urea plus tubular cell, acute cellular rejection, WBC bacteria, WBC cast, urinary tract infection, decoy cell, polymorph, uh, is polyoma virus. So there, this uh, has a sensitivity of 100 percent and specificity 90 percent. This uh, just uh, will, uh, this was a patient with acute renal failure. He has undergone a coronary uh, artery uh, stenting. Uh, post uh, stenting, after seven days, the patient developed uh, acute kidney injury. Uh, patient had uh, increased blood urea nitrogen creatinine. The uh, patient had an increase of phosphate, calcium was low. Uh, point to note, uh, creatinine is disproportionately high to blood urea and CPK was very high. SGOT was high. Urine picture showed um, 4 plus protein, suggestive of a probably glomerular involvement. Blood was there and dirty brown cast and a hyaline cast uh, suggesting that uh, brownish urine was there but uh, blood was too positive. Only two, three slides are known. This, uh, this is a dirty brown cause suggestive of rhabdomyolysis of acute tubular injury. That patient had uh, given uh, rosuvastatin, 80 milligram of rosuvastatin, and patient had developed rhabdomyolysis. Rosuvastatin, 40 milligram of rosuvastatin is equal to 80 milligram of uh, atrovastatin. Now, uh, crystal, common crystal, uric acid crystal, calcium oxalate crystal or calcium uh, phosphate crystals, if they are a transient, they may be because of a supersaturation, food or dehydration. But if they are a persistent crystal urea, it will be a significant. Uh, now, if patient has come with a terminal hematuria and such type of parasite, with uh, RBC, suggests it is a cystosoma uh, hematobium. Now, in conclusion, examination of urinary sediment is the most e inexpensive and quick test in our hand. It is the only test which can be done bedside and correct methodology and knowledge. It can wide range of the... If patient has got a hematuria, proteinuria, RBC, proliferative glomerulonephritis. If suppose this patient has got a normal renal function, I will think of a, it is a mesangial proliferative. If suppose patient has got an abnormal increased blood urea nitrogen creatinine, severe renal failure, it may be a crescentic glomerulonephritis or a diffuse proliferative. Heavy protein urea, lipid urea, no RBCs, no WBC, non proliferative glomerulonephritis. It may be podocytopathy, minimal change, FAGS, membranous, or it may be diabetic nephropathy. Plenty of WBC, few RBC, WBC cast, interstitial nephritis. 
if fever with chills that can grow to pyelonephritis if suppose the patient has got acute renal failure protein tres muddy cast tubular cell acute tubular necrosis normal urine tres protein urea with azotemia it may be a pre renal renal failure or obstru obstructive nephropathy presentation with severe hypertension protein urea hematuria leukocyte urea renal parenchymal hypertension severe hypertension with bland urine or reno vascular hypertension means this give the idea about uh, what is the um, urine how urine can be helpful protein urea is the earliest marker of a structural damage to the kidney don't go on doing uh, blood glucose and blood sugar in diabetic do a protein urea every 6 monthly serum per creatinine still remain the marker of a functional impairment of the kidney but to get the increase in creatinine 50% of the kidney should be damaged so early marker may be a gfr but with the gfr indian patient has got a low gfr go with the marker of a structural damage first structural damage then uh, functional impairment then so great is the potentiality of a examination of urine sediment that it should be carried out by physician himself 2 to 5 minutes of additional time consume often will reach the rewarded uh, this was uh, stated in 1961 why then such valuable taste is so frequently neglected by us and nephrologists <coughs> so nephrologists has uh, done uh, their job now uh, all uh, technician they will be trained and uh, um, in each examination uh, urine examination is a part of the physical examination 10th march 22 will be a world kidney day that is uh, kidney health for all and this year's um, theme is bridge the knowledge gap to better kidney care i think i must have um, bridge the knowledge gap uh, today and uh, you had hurt me and you are likely to forget <laughs> this is the first mbbs if we see we remember this is a second mbbs and third mbbs we do and we understand this is the residency and practicing doctor and keep learning new knowledge so we are doing our if we do ourselves we will understand and that is uh, uh, thank you